Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Russell. I'm the Director of Supply Quality for Strategic Materials. And uh, Tom Burns, I don't know if any of you know Tom Burns, but he's been in the Florida market forever in glass. He's still our uh, commercial representative in this area for sales and, and uh, supply. So um, he has uh, actually got called away today, so I am filling in for him. So hopefully I can get through this all right. Um, one good thing is we're not going to hear about China too much today in this. <laughs> Glass doesn't go to China. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't, it's rarely, you know, can be transported, you know, that far. 1,500 miles might be a max, you know, on a rail car. Um, anyway, um, let's talk about the, uh, some of the challenges that we have. Uh, I will cover also the markets uh, for glass. Um, and uh, as we get there, you'll see that, I mean, glass has been pretty much the persona non grata in all your MRFs for several years. Um, so we, we want to talk, I think, a little bit more on, on that end of it. It's what, you know, what are some of the options you all might have uh, on that way. So, and here's, uh, here's we are located across the United States. Um, we started in 1896. The Baskis brothers were recycling glass in Cleveland, Ohio. And that's when we, uh, we started, and our, our headquarters were, were in Cleveland, actually, when we started. We're now headquartered in Houston. Uh, we have 40 manufacturing plants across the country, uh, actually Canada and, and Mexico. <clears throat> uh, 18 of those take in the MRF glass. As a director of inbound supply quality, that's where I spend most of my time, as you can imagine. The MRF material glass that we get is, you know, the, the, the worst that there is as far as contamination. So that's where I spend a lot of my time. Um, we recycle close to, it says over 3 million inbound tons of post-consumer and industrial glass each year. But a lot of what we bring in is, uh, you know, highly, highly contaminated as, as we'll, we'll uh, see in, in, a, in a minute. Uh, so a lot of those tons are skewed as far as the amount of actual glass that comes in. Uh, don't ask me what the green states are, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I know what they are, you know. <laughs> I mean, Texas, you know. Ontario is up there, but anyway, that's Ontario. Foreshortened because we're only in a tiny little corner. Uh, but anyway, this this slide I got, and I, I tried to get the color out of there, but but uh, I thought uh, I would leave it in because you know after several tries and ruining my whole presentation. I figured I'd just leave it alone and take the abuse. Uh, <clears throat> what we do is we manufacture furnace-ready cullet, fiberglass reeds, uh, feedstock. Uh, furnace-ready cullet is for the glass container uh, uh, industry, where I spent my first 20 years of, of my work in life. Um, and there's a furnace ready call it for the glass container business, fiberglass feedstock, abrasive materials, and road bead, road bead feedstock. Yeah. Road bed. Not road bed, it, we, we don't like road bed, but road bead, uh, reflective bead is uh, the, the reflective beads that are put in the, uh, in the paint striping, uh, used on signs and things like that. We, we provide uh, ground and sometimes uh, C sized uh, material grinds to the bead, the bead manufacturers for that. So, so uh, the top picture, whoops, hold on, hold on, hold on. The top picture here is, is uh, what our MRF material glass, and in, in, in air quotes, uh, looks like when it comes to us. Um, it is 50% uh, of non-glass residual, uh, and then on top of that, there's, there's quite a bit of tiny little bits of glass that are very difficult for us to use as well. And um, so it really leaves us a small, uh, a small amount of the glass that comes in as actual usable, um, recyclable glass. Um, the bottom pictures show uh, uh, the uh, final product in, in our, uh, this is our processing plant in uh, uh, North Carolina. 
but um, it comes in, I mean, it might have 30,000 ppm parts per million of ceramic. Uh, when we ship it out, we're, we're held to some pretty high standards as far as contamination goes. And that's, uh, you know, 0 0.15, 0 0.25 organics and less than 50 ppm of ceramic. So um, it's, and, you know, get within color uh, specifications as well. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a jungle to get through that. But, um, and then just an overview here, we've got uh, our supply. We also, um, we bring in plate glass as well. Um, but there's uh, a container deposit material is our, our cleanest material that we get. Um, plate glass and then there's curbside collection from single stream programs and things like that and from uh, several of the MRFs that, that are uh, out there. Um, then we uh, process it, we, uh, we clean it, sort uh, by color and also sort by size. Uh, and our major customers, our, our largest customer by, by tonnage is the glass container uh, manufacturing company. Uh, um, Beer is 60% uh, of the glass container business. Um, it has always been a leader, so you know, keep drinking the beer out of bottles and cans if you have to, you know, but you know, bottles is best. Fiberglass, um, um, that also is uh, our second largest, uh, as far as tons go, our second largest um, uh, market for our recycled material, our glass. Uh, then, of course, the highway beads we talked about, and then some, some specialty markets, uh, tiles, uh, things like that. In the containers, um, demand is off year to year slightly, um, which isn't really a huge concern. Um, it's, it's been very, very, very steady. Uh, and, and all you guys that you know, may operate MRFs and, and things like that, you know that the the price uh, paid for glass has been, if nothing else, it's been steady um, and, and, and very low. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're talking, uh, when you compare it to PET or aluminum or something like that, it's, uh, you know, it's ridiculous because we pay, you know, uh, one or two or three cents a, a pound at the very, very most. So it's, uh, it's on the low end of the market, but it's steady, so that's good. Uh, but the, the uh, reason that, well, demand is, is, is uh, uh, flat, let's say, or slightly declining year over year in the glass container uh, business, but, but they have a real push to increase the amount of recycled call it in their furnaces. Uh, so that's a real bright spot. They, they, where we're currently at 30 percent. Five years ago, they were about 25 percent. They've got targets um, at 20, 2020. I think they want to get uh, closer to 50 or 55 percent. So, it's uh, there's a lot of lot of tons that, that can go in there. Um, and why are they using color? They, well, there's 20 percent less air emissions if they if they use that. I think six tons of recycled glass will reduce one ton uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions and so on. So a big, a big uh, pusher of that is the, also the uh, reduction in, in utilities costs, electric and, and gas both. These furnaces take an amazing amount of electricity. And when you can reduce that by adding uh, more cullet, last cullet in their, in their batch material, they do it and um, it's uh, a real way that they can, they can move. There are some plants that are running at uh, 85, 90% recycled cullet, so it's, it's, it can be done if you've got markets that are you know, economically uh, uh, appropriate. Uh, a big thing in the container um, recycling uh, uh, market, is, or glass recycling market, is, the, is it, it's absolutely a closed loop. Uh, the glass containers can be used over and over and over again. It's hundred percent recyclable. Um, it is totally inert. It's uh, you know a, a material of choice for foods, beverages, and things like that. Fiberglass review. Uh, same reasons why they want to use cullet uh, with with emissions uh, reductions. 
uh, reductions in energy costs and extended furnace life. As they can melt, if they, as they can melt this glass at a lower temperature, it extends their furnaces. And if they don't have to, re, you know, re, uh, rebuild a furnace, they're 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 pretty happy if they can put that off a year. Um, the the fiberglass market is is again um, it's tied to the uh, housing starch, so you can see the big dip. Um, oops, hold on, hold on, did that again, didn't I? The big dip here uh, is, is uh, 2007, 2008, and so on. So housing starts drives that. We're starting to see a uh, uh, comeback in that. So uh, um, we never saw a drop off really in a, as far as shipments goes because during, during those, those times, a lot of the furnaces uh, ramped up their usage of, of cullet uh, in those periods because they don't want to lose the supply. They don't want to. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to lose that. Uh, you know that history, that uh, that supplier, and so on. They want to keep the volume going. So they did that, and they boosted their recycle content uh, rather than shut off uh, the uh, supply. The blue line there. The first time I gave this uh, a presentation, it was given to me the night before. Uh, I had to give it, and somebody asked me what the blue line was. I, had, you know, I really didn't know, but uh, I have figured it out. It is, uh, this is a one-year, a one-year, 12-month uh, average as it goes. So, um, again, um, I, n I don't know what use that is anyway, but, uh, you, know. <laughs> I, you know. That's why I couldn't explain it, because, you know, it, it's... Uh, one good thing is uh, a six pack of beer bottles produces enough uh, fiberglass to insulation to fill a standard wall cavity. Uh, you probably didn't know that, but uh, <laughs> that's there for you. Uh, the, the material that we've been getting has been just deteriorating, of course, over the years. Uh, the onset of the single stream, early 2000s. Was you know was uh, really a, a tipping point. It's gotten worse uh, since and, and and more recently. But the uh, um, this is what why do I keep doing that? Uh, this is what it used to look like when we would get source separated, even color separated glass. Um, I mean, we can pay a premium. We can run a run a machine. We can run a, a, a sorting plant. Uh, for for very you know very low cost uh, today um, you know to, to handle material like this is is much 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 more challenging um, the, the uh, we talked about that let's see and obviously as as the uh, the contamination uh, increases the 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 costs of our production also increases uh, uh, when you have uh, 50% usable glass coming in, you've got 50% of material that you need to do something with, and a lot of times that's landfill. Uh, what we're getting from the MRFs is, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later too, but a lot of what we get in this non-glass residual, yeah, there's some aluminum in there, there's some steel in there, and we can easily recover that. But the other commodities that are there, the paper and the plastics, by that point, it's so uh, contaminated, it's uh, b basically unusable to us, and, and we, uh, uh, we landfill it. So it, uh, costs are high, and it's, uh, it's a real waste of commodities. This is uh, increasing, the tons uh, have been increasing over the years. This is 2010 through 2014, five years. Um, you know, the, the tons being collected is, is higher, the contamination also, uh, which is the red line, and that's the percent of un unusable glass uh, is the uh, red line. And uh, you can see we, we here, we have pushed real hard in the past couple of years, uh, pushing back to our suppliers, talking to them about, you know, what it is that we need, what glass do we need, what it is that's in that, that uh, non-glass component. Um, and uh, we've pushed real hard to go back and help educate them as to what's going on with that. And there has been more, uh, obviously more 
focus on the MRF side on the glass, even though it's always been a, a pain in the neck and it's been the, you know, the persona non grata. Um, you know, th there, there's a, uh, th there are ways to do that. And, and the, reason, the reason is that uh, with the other commodities dropping in, in price value, uh, more focus has been put on the, on the glass. Uh, as which which has always been at zero or, or a cost or very very low in, income net, so uh, it's become a, the uh, you know the uh, subject of more more uh, focus. Glass has value, yes it does. I mean of course it does, uh, but we don't. It's hard for us to pay for the non glass material. We can't pay for the non glass. It costs us to get rid of it. Um, What we entered into a few years ago, four or five years ago, which has been my focus uh, over the past uh, five years, is, is to create a way to measure our inbound quality. Uh, because three mixed glass from MRFs is not equal all, all across all MRFs. They all do uh, varying jobs, uh, you know, quality jobs as far as getting that material cleaned up. Uh, so what we did is we came up with a method to uh, measure this inbound quality. We take a look at almost every, every truck that comes in and we do a small sample and we analyze it for non-glass residue and undersized material. And we can build these uh, databases here uh, that are reports that we can pull up uh, from any time frame, feed them back to our suppliers throughout the month on a weekly basis. Uh, uh, or, or monthly, you can compare this last month to, uh, you know, the month before they put their new scalper screen in or something like that. So it's been very useful. Uh, we've, you know, it's part of our, our education of the MRFs as far as what it is that we need. Um, <clears throat> and it's helped to drive uh, a little bit uh, better quality in the last couple of years. The, uh, what this has also done is allow us to, um, tie that quality to, to pricing matrix. Uh, each one of our, our plants have a pricing matrix. It is uh, uh, transparent, it's easy to see. Um, it looks like this. Um, not easy to read, it's easy to see. But uh, we wanna be open, we wanna be transparent on this. And uh, you know, the, the, big, the big things are the non-glass res residue and the uh, um, undersized material. Every, every plant, every one of our plants has a different uh, set of uh, drivers as far as the costs go, and that's the landfill rates, uh, what are their market prices, what are their supply prices, what are their operating costs. So, um, so what, hap what this is saying is that uh, and, and if you're a MRF operator and you're looking for a price, uh, let's say to Sarasota, uh, this is not Sarasota's um, matrix, but uh, Tom would have that. Um, but they all look similar, and, and what that does is measure the undersized material from zero on up, and, and the uh, non-glass residual from zero on up. And you can see if 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 you put some effort into it, and uh, like Kent was saying, you have you know if you target some some investments to clean up this material, there's a way you can go and increase your market, increase your pricing, and so on. Uh, here is a matter, you know, a matter of uh, interest is, if you have zero undersize and zero percent NGR, uh, let's say that price is $20.80 a ton uh, for, for glass delivered there. But as it gets worse, let's say 20% and 30 and 15%, uh, let's say, you're, you're down at zero negative, uh, negative numbers. So there's, a, there's a, a lot of room to go. Um, those are bright spots, you know, that when we look at, at glass recycling. Um, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room to grow. There's market out there. This is a specification that we've developed. Uh, it looks a little bit different. Uh, if you asked me to send you, a, you know, the industry targeting specs, it would look a little different than this, but the numbers are the same. Uh, and again, we're, we're just focusing on the non-glass undersized, but it also has some other targets here. 
and we don't, we're not going to reject the load because it's a little bit high in non-glass or, or something like that, but these are, these are targets. So what do you do? Uh, you know, if you want the best price for glass, you keep it clean, you keep it uh, pristine, uh, store it away from other commodities. If you've got, at your MRF, if you've got uh, a people delivering uh, commercial, maybe they're coming in from bars, restaurants, keep that glass separate, keep it clean. Ask Tom for a different price for that material. You know, uh, don't put it through the MRF and then it, you know, it just contaminates everything else and, and uh, uh, you're better off just, just going ahead to do it. Uh, keep it you know, out of the MRF if you can. Um, there's all, there are alternative collections of glass uh, you know, uh, uh, that you could look at. Um, in the MRF itself, the, this is an important part. Pull the glass out early. Most of y'all do that at the OC screen, let it get down through there and get it out of there. And then uh, uh, repair your equipment, uh, preventative maintenance. Here, um, better design process and system for the glass. Once it hits the OCC and it drops down through your glass breaker, uh, a lot of times it just goes straight out to the glass pile. Well, you know, that's not working. There's still a lot of commodities in there that you can pull out. So. Here's your, your target uh, for, for a, a small expenditure uh, to reclaim, um, reclaim the commodities, reclaim that paper, the aluminum, the steel, the plastic. Don't send it to us as, as, as non-glass residual. You just get dinged for it on price. But if you put in a trommel or a scalping screen, you can send that material right back to your line and, and, and pull the paper out, aluminum and steel. Uh, keep those commodities at the MRF. Um, that's, that's the point right there. Thank you for your attention.